Okay guys, so we are back on our quest of making a great mirror effect in Unity that works in VR. So in the previous video, we used render texture and got a decent result, but unfortunately, there was some glitch when going near or far enough from the mirror. And even more, this mirror is only 2D and does not take into account the depths that we especially want in VR. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you another technique that will fix these issues. So make sure to like and subscribe this video if you are enjoying my content and want to support my work and of course you can grab the source code on my patreon link in the description okay so we are in a similar starting project as the part one i have made a simple vr setup with the unity xr interaction toolkit and i have already placed a mirror on a wall which has its blue forward axis pointing outside and as a child, a simple quad for the mesh of our mirror. Now, before getting started, it's not worth it that there are different techniques to create a 3D mirror, some with more advanced camera manipulation called stereo rendering. You can find a good example for free on the asset store by Vive, the stereo rendering toolkit. In this video, we are going to aim at something way simpler, but that will give us a similar effect using stencil effect. By the way, I've already covered this uh, stencil technique and used it to remake a Doctor Strange portal with the quest path through in an exclusive tutorial on my Patreon. So if that's something that you would like to learn as well, the link is in the description. But anyway, let me show you how to use that technique for our mirror. So I have my environment group as a child of this environment game object. What I'm going to do is select it, press on Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. There you go, we can rename it Mirror Environment. Now let's select this duplicate and drag it as a child of the mirror parent. Now be careful, cause we are going to do this precisely. I'm going to select the mirror parent again and write minus one instead of one in the Z value on the scale. This way, this has inverted the mirror and it should run as well. As you can see, by doing so, we now have a mirror version of our scene created. Now what's left is to invert back the mirror parent without the environment. So for this, let's select the mirror environment and drag it outside of the mirror to not have it as a child of it anymore. Then select back our mirror and write back the scale to be 1, 1, 1. There you go, now we have our mirror in the middle of the two walls and we cannot see it because it's behind the mirrored version of the walls that we can see over there. So to be able to see it back, I'm going to select these two walls and as we will not see them with the mirror, make sure that these are indeed the whole part of the mirror environment and simply disable them by clicking here. Finally, we have another small issue at the moment. If we go to environment, light, as you can see, the light from our environment are applied to the mirrored environment as well and vice versa. So basically, we have two times the light applied, which is something that we want to avoid. So for this, I'm going to go in layer, add layer, create a new layer called mirror environment. We can select back the mirror environment game object, go to layer again, and set the layer on the new layer we just created, mirror environment. Here, click on yes to set this layer to its children as well. And now what's left? is to go to the light of the main environment. In my case, I'm going to select the four point light that I have and in cooling mask, uncheck mirror environment. There you go. Now, as you can see, this four light does not apply on the mirror environment anymore. And finally, let's do the same with the mirrored light. So let's go this time to mirror environment, lights, select the four points light, but this time only select mirror environment by setting first the cooling mask to nothing, then to mirror environment. There you go, everything is now ready. What we just created is a mirror version of our environment, but the next thing we need to do is be able to see this environment only through the mirror we have here. And for this, we are going to use a stencil effect. Basically, a stencil works by giving to each pixel on the screen a certain number. Then do the same with another object that we can call a stencil mask. And by comparing the two number, either hide or show the pixel to create the desired effect. Okay, so for the stencil effect, you can actually do this by creating a custom shader, but as I'm using URP, 
I can actually do it very easily using the renderer feature. And now, if you don't know what a renderer feature is, I would highly recommend this video by Brackis, which will explain you everything. But anyway, let's get started. If we go to Edit, Project Settings, Graphics, you should be able to see a scriptable render pipeline setting here. So if we double click on it, it should open it in the inspector. Next, we can double click in the renderer list to open it also. And this is where we can customize and add renderer features on our game. In my case, I'm going to click on add renderer feature, renderer objects. Let's call it mirror, environment, opaque. And we want it to be applied before rendering opaques. So for the layer mask, we want this feature to be applied only to the mirror environment layer that we created earlier. So there you go. Now let's add the stencil properties that I was talking about. So for this, let's head over to override, enable stencil, and in my case, I will give it a default value of one. Now to make the mirror environment only shows behind the mirror, we need to set the compare function to equal. Perfect. So now that we are rendering the mirror environment with this render features, we don't need it to be rendered by default. So let's go at the top and in the opaque layer mask, uncheck mirror environment. Now, as you can see, the mirror world has disappeared, but don't worry, it is still there. As you can see, if I click around here, you can see that I'm selecting an object in this scene. But what we need to do now is simply to create the stencil mask, which is in our case, the mirror. Okay, so let's go back to our renderer. Click on Add Renderer Feature, Render Object, call it Mirror, set the event to Before Rendering Opaque. Now for the layer, we need to create a specific layer for our mirror. So I'm going to select our mirror quad, go to Layer, Add Layer, call it Mirror, and now click back on our mirror quad and assign this layer. Okay, if we go back to our renderer, make sure that this mirror layer is not selected in the default opaque renderer at the top, because again, we are going to add it using our render object ourselves. So next, let's go to the mirror render object that we made, set the layer mask to be mirror, and as you can see, now the mirror appeared back. <laughs> let's now go to override, enable stencil, set the renderer again to one, now, this is where the magic happens. So let's set the compare function to equal. And if they are equal, we want to keep. But if they are not, we want to hide it. So let's set fail to replace. Okay, so we are done with the stencil setup. But as you can see, it does not seem to be working. Now, this is because of two things. First, we have the wall of our environment that are behind the mirror. And so it is hiding the mirror environment. So just to test, let's select these two walls over there and disable them. There you go. Finally, the second issue is that the rendering of the mirror must be applied before the mirror environment. So let's go back to our renderer and simply on the renderer object of the mirror, click on the three little dots and select move up. And ta-da, just like this, we have created a portal to our mirror environment, which turned our quad into a nice looking mirror. That is so cool. But we still have to fix the wall issue from a minute ago. And to do this, we can again use the stencil. So to do this time, not show something behind the mirror, but this time hide something, which in our case is the wall. So I'm going to select back the two walls that we disabled under the environment and enable them. Then go to layer, add layer, create a layer called mirror hole. We can select back the two walls and assign them this new layer. Oh, and by the way, as you can see, this has disabled the lighting on these walls. So to fix it, make sure to go to lights, select our lights and add this mirror hole layer to the cooling mask of all the light. There you go. Now let's go back to our renderer feature. We are going to do the same things we did for the mirror environment, which is first make sure that the mirror hole layer is disabled in the default opaque renderer at the top. 
Then click on Add Render Feature, Render Objects, call it Mirror Hole, set Before Rendering Opaques, set the Layer Mask to Mirror Hole, go to Override, Enable Stencil, set the value to 1, and but this time, this is very important, instead of checking if it's equal, let's set it to Not Equal. And ta-da! Now our mirror is hiding the two walls behind but showing the mirror environment so everything is working like we want. That's awesome. And already, the result is really cool. So now let's click on play and grab our VR headset to try this. And as you can see, this works pretty well. The mirror effect works great without any bugs and is even working in 3D. But I mean, it's pretty hard for you to notice on a YouTube video, but trust me. <laughs> of course, for now, we cannot see ourselves in the mirror and that's something that we are going to fix soon. But there are two other things that I want to improve. First, as you can see, we have some green stuff in the cauldron that we cannot see in the mirror. And secondly, there is no material on the mirror anymore. So let's see how we can fix this. Okay, so we cannot see the green particle on the cauldron because the renderer mirror environment feature that we made only works for opaque objects. But of course, we can do this exact setup, but for transparent objects as well. So let's go to the renderer. In the transparent layer mask, disable mirror environment, mirror, and mirror hole, like we did for opaque. And then, Let's create a new renderer feature, click on renderer objects, call it mirror environment transparent, set it to before rendering transparent. For the queue, let's set it this time to transparent. And for the layer mask, to mirror environment. And now do the theme stencil setup. So let's enable stencil, value to one, compare function to equal, and there you go. Now everything should be working if we click on play. As you can see, it works. Now we can see all the transparent objects like the cauldron particles on the mirror as well. So everything is working for transparent objects as well. That's awesome. Okay, next, I think we can improve our mirror look by adding a material to it. But as you can see, for now, our setup uses a mirror quad to show the mirror environment behind, but is not rendering the quad itself. Actually, we can easily fix this by going to Mirror, Quad, duplicate it with Ctrl D. For the first quad, I'm going to call it Mirror Stencil Mask. And for the second, Mirror Mesh. And there you go. Now, very important, set its layer back to default. So now what we can do is change the mirror material to transparent to kind of tint the mirror environment and add some details. But be careful, because doing so will also change the material on the mirror stencil mask. And because we set the renderer features on opaque for the mirror, if we change the material to transparent, it will not work. So to do this, let's select our material, call it mirror stencil material, duplicate it with Ctrl plus D, name the new one something else, like mirror mesh material, and then select our mirror mesh and drag this new material instead of the old mirror stencil. And there you go. Now we can do what we want with this new material because both the stencil and the mesh have a different material. So in my case, I think I will set the new surface to be transparent, go to color and reduce the alpha value. We can of course give it a bluish tint, and we can increase a little bit the smoothness to give some nice reflection. Also, I have here a random dirty texture that I found on the internet that I think will look good, so I'm going to simply drag it in the base map. We can even add a quick frame also, which will make our mirror look pretty nice by simply creating a cube as a child of the mirror, set its layer to mirror hole so that it will not hide what's inside the mirror, and scale it to fit the mirror quad. And there you go, just like this, we now have a beautiful mirror, I think. But now, let's head to the most important part of the mirror tutorial, be able to see ourselves. Okay, so now the goal is to make an object from the mirror environment be able to follow the position of something in our normal environment. To do this, we are going to make a really similar script to what we did in the first part with the camera movement, and I'm going to show you how with this box over here. 
So if we select its mirror opposite right there, I'm going to click on add component and create a new script called follow mirror. Now let's open this new script in Visual Studio. Okay, so in this script, I'm going to need a public transform called object to follow and another public transform called mirror. Now to mirror the position, we simply need to get the local position of the object to follow with, in the update, vector3 object to follow local equals mirror dot inverse transform point object to follow dot position. And then use this vector3 on this transform position, but by inverting its z axis with transform dot position equals mirror dot transform point new vector3 object to follow local dot x object to follow local dot y and now minus object to follow local dot z and there you go only one thing left to set the rotation and this is in fact even simpler we can do transform dot local rotation equals object to follow dot local rotation there you go now let's save and go back to unity to try this Perfect, there you go. Don't forget to assign the parameter of this script. I'm going to click on that little lock icon on top here to lock the inspector. Now let's select the box on the normal environment and drag it for the object to follow. For the mirror, simply drag here the mirror parent. There you go. We can now unlock the inspector and let's click on play to see if this works. And there you go, as you can see, if I move the box, the mirror box move and rotate in a mirror position, so it's working well. And basically, now you can apply this follow mirror script to any moving object in our scene, and that's what we can do as well for the player ends and head for our VR rig. So let's leave play mode and try this. Okay, so I'm going to select our complete XR origin setup and press on Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. Rename it Mirror XR Origin. Now we can right click, go to Prefab and unpack completely. And now my goal will be to remove everything that has not a renderer on this rig. So all the children, except for XR origin, all the XR origin scripts, everything on the main camera, everything on the left hand and right hand, and all their children except for left hand model and the controller. There you go, now we have an almost empty XR origin and so to mirror it correctly, let's do the same thing that we did for the mirror environment at the beginning of the video, which is drag it as a child of the mirror, invert the mirror on the Z axis, drag outside the XR origin mirror and set the mirror parent back to 1, 1, 1 on the scale. And there you go, as you can see, this has placed our XR origin mirror at the correct mirror position. And what's left is now to use our follow mirror script on all the moving parts. So I'm going to select the mirror XR origin, the main camera, the left end, and the right end, and click on add component, follow mirror, drag the mirror for the mirror variable, and for each, set their object to follow respectively on the XR origin. And there you go, now everything should be ready with this setup. One way to find out, so let's click on play to try this. And there you go guys, I can see myself in the mirror, everything is working perfectly. Even the animation are replicated and mirror on each end, so that's perfect. And that's something to try, this feels just magic. But now, it's also important to take into consideration the optimization. This technique is really powerful, but a great power comes with great responsibility, so make sure to not abuse this mirror effect as it will double the computation of your scene, but as you can see, with a simple scene like mine here, it works perfectly. Now, to be totally honest with you, making this tutorial took me more time than expected, but I hope that you enjoy following along, and if you did, you can leave a like below, it means a lot for this channel, and of course, you can support my work and get access to the source code of this project and exclusive content like the VR Doctor Strange portal that I talked about earlier on my Patreon, link in the description below. See you soon, thank you for watching, and bye bye!